Hey, IDS 302. Oh my, I think we're at module five, aren't we? Let me double check. 302, module five starts tomorrow, September 30th. Today is September 29th. It's Tuesday, and I just did 301's video, so I'm doing yours too, okay? It's going to jump on this bad boy. Um, all right, for 302, let's talk. I've got a couple of things, like I said, I always try to stir things up a little bit with, um, no, just letting you know about certain things I run into that um, caused me to think about being a better consumer of knowledge that I could pass on to you. And I'm going to include these in the, the announcement for the email. But just for example, uh, let me show you this page, and I'll read it to you. Don't worry about reading it. It says, um, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb's expansion in the Sahara, new insights from primary sources. Um, it's an abstract, it's got an abstract, it's got all your acknowledgement. It's a research paper, and it appears in the journal, Studies in Conflict and Terrorism, okay? Now, some of you are have domestic terrorism as a, uh, you know, as a topic, but uh, this is, you know, a research paper. I just wanted to show you here at least what this looks like on this site and everything. In case you're interested in it, it's not a huge deal, but I'm, I'm just saying that I saw this, and what strikes me again is primary sources. Okay, because we've talked about peer-reviewed sources, primary sources, and I'll get more into that. But again, to differentiate, either of those are typically used to cite, to back up work, support it, challenge it, confirm it. But peer-reviewed are those papers that appear in journals like this. They have to get reviewed before they get published. Textbooks, um, journals, dissertations, things like that are peer reviewed. All right. The primary sources are those that are direct. Okay. They're directly, you know, from the researchers. So as you're doing your data survey, you're a primary researcher. You're, if anyone take uses that research, it's directly conduit is one to one. It's not going through a peer reviewed situation. Now, primary data is definitely usable, primary sources. And here, Talking about this peer-reviewed article, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb's expansion of the Sahara, new insights from primary sources. See how that's written, okay? So these are from sources that have direct knowledge and research and have collected some data, probably a lot of qualitative and such, okay? Um, but I wanted to point that out to you. Then I have um, I have some pictures. No, I have... Uh, um, I went to a seminar earlier uh, this week, just for the heck of it, and took some pictures right off the thing here. Uh, science versus pseudoscience was the talk. He's a professor at ASU. Uh, he's a, uh, what do they call those? Uh, theoretical physicists. That's right. I'm thinking Big Bang Theory here. Um, he did a talk on debunking pseudoscientific claims, and it was a great talk. And I don't know if I can include these pictures, so I'm going to talk about them real quick. Here's one. It says the outline. Um, science, what is it? Scientific method, shadows of the mind, misinformation. How hard is it to debunk a myth? Examples of fraud slash pseudoscience. Fancy example and conclusion. Okay, so... He's talking about some terminology here. Okay, I know this is really like weak the way I'm doing this, but some terminology is talking about a fact. A fact is a close agreement by observers about the same phenomenon. Okay, so it don't, notice it doesn't say what's true. It's a fact. It's a close agreement by observers about the same phenomenon. And I can think of a million examples. I'm sure you can too. Hypothesis. An educated guess presumed to be factual until supported by experiment. Okay, it's supported by data, experiment. Scientific, if there is a test to prove it wrong. That's a scientific hypothesis, okay? A law or principle is a hypothesis that has been tested repeatedly and has not been contradicted. Okay, notice it's not saying proven 
correct. Notice they do say prove something wrong. They rarely say prove it correct. They'll just say it's been tested repeatedly and has not been contradicted, okay? A theory is a synthesis of a large body of information that encompasses well-tested verified hypotheses about certain aspects of the natural world, okay? Um, I don't know if I, I can't attach these, so sorry, but uh, it might be recorded anyways. But I just want to bring this up. Here's, a, here's an interesting one I want to show you real quick. Airborne baloney. That's one that he brought up because he says, as we, if you go shopping in the pharmacy section, you'll see this product called Airborne, right? Um, it is, you know, for those, I'm just zoomed way in on it, but you've probably seen these packages, right? And notice what he's saying here. This is like, so probably saw a lot of them, but what's he saying about it? Created by a school teacher. That's what that says over there. Okay, I can't get that in there. Well, uh, that's what it says on the side. Created by a school teacher. Now, this is used, used as a selling point, mind you. Okay, he says, he writes down here, Airborne's creator is Knight McDowell Labs. Victoria Knight McDowell is a school teacher, and her husband, Ryder McDowell, is a script writer. Instead of hiding their lack of credentials, they boast about them on their webpage. Created by a second grade school teacher. Well, as he so eloquently put it, he's not going to be, he's not really interested in, in purchasing something that is based on a medicine type uh, supplement just because it was made by a second grade teacher. Okay, be careful what you're seeing and what we're giving gravitas to, right? Research is humble. Let's give it advertising that you're a school teacher and then the other one's a script writer. They knew how to market. You marketing students know, know about that, right? Okay, so the conclusion was stay skeptical but creative. Use scientific method and remember, extraordinary claims must be supported by extraordinary evidence. Think about UFOs, Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster. Okay, that monster under my bed. Um, think about extraordinary claims must be supported by extraordinary evidence. Okay, it's important to remember that. No one in this class, I don't believe, is coming up with extraordinary claims, but... Um, that's what I'm saying. So I wanted to introduce you to those couple of things that I saw. And, it, and it's pretty cool when you your eyes are open and you start seeing these things, okay? I know we have someone in class doing, you know, kind of like um, uh, 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 racial stereotyping and things from beauty products and such. And, and I almost have a collection of that going years ago when I remember – bottle of shampoo by a major manufacturer that said um, for normal hair. What the hell's that? I sure don't have it, right? Um, things like that. There's all kinds of, you You know, you know. Because back when I was starting to save these, eight, ten years ago, I don't think our eyes were open enough. Dare I say the word woke? Oh, that's so old, right? Uh, but you get what I'm saying there, okay? So Let's do um, just Easter egg number one real quick. Let's just call it, I'll make you spell this, science versus pseudoscience. I just want you to be aware of the concepts of science versus pseudoscience. Pseudo being fake, imitation, science. Okay, be very careful. Um, you know, I know we've got terms of integrated health, integrative health. I had an integrative health practitioner at Mayo Clinic. Fabulous, from a program down in Tucson at that other school. University of Arizona, um, fabulous program, integrative health. They look at the entire patient. They look at, they bring in people, experts in many fields. Okay. Um, I'm also aware of, you know, whether you want to call it new age. Um, there's so many names to it. Eastern from East, from the far, far Eastern medicines and natural paths and Vedanta. I, I don't. I can't. I'm just saying words now. Um, I'm not entirely against that by any means. Okay. You know, uh, there's there, there's 
everything, you know, the mainstream doctors used to be using leeches, you know, to leach your skin. Uh, so, but science versus pseudoscience, don't just take something for face value without looking at what you're getting into. I just bought this bag of creamer for my coffee at Costco and that baby's going back. It's got some kind of aquamarine stuff in there and something else. And it's just clumpy and I didn't like it. It's going back, but I tried it. Okay. Anyways, let's move on and talk about uh, survey links. Make sure you hit enter after you copy and paste it because then it makes that link hot and we can click on it and move forward. That's a good thing. Conversely, when you put a link hot or not in the body of a paper that you're writing, it's not a good thing. Okay, I don't think I ran into that here. I was doing that with my 301, but you guys really are, are, are much better in terms of scholarly writing, and I want to keep rising uh, up and stepping up our game on that. So I'll be looking forward to your step fours and the rest of your survey uh, links. <clears throat> and I'll get to those tomorrow or Wednesday, Thursday, okay? Um, step four is a challenge, but remember I'm rewarding academic rigor. Conversely, I am dinging the heck out of lack of academic rigor. Don't come to me using ASU's website as a source. Don't come to me using the textbook as a source, not in these papers. I will ding you. Similarly, and if I haven't brought this up already, I am so sorry. Stay away from anything with a pedia. Investopedia, okay? Stay away from anything with a Pedia, Wikipedia, of course. Stay away from uh, dictionaries, Merriam Webster, okay? Stay away from dot com. Stay away from blogs. Stay away from cron.com. I love cron.com. It's a Houston newspaper back when we had newspapers. Now it's just a great website, too, but don't use it for this. This is academic rigor, primary sources, peer reviewed work, right? That's what we're looking for here. Stay away. I will ding you. I will disallow. It's kind of like when you go here, there's a jury and the judge says the jury will disallow those last, uh, will never unhear them or something. You know, that's what I will do. Okay, so I want you to stay tough on this. Um, so in module five, looks pretty simple, is it? Heck no. Okay, there's not a lot to do, but there's a lot to do. That's the Tao Te Ching in me. See, I call that. Uh, okay. Um, do October 4th as a reflection discussion board? Hey, you get to talk about I, me, my. Keep it out of your paper, but use it here in the DB. Um, complete the course evaluation. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, remember, this is it. Everything is due before midnight on the last day of class, which is what? Yes, 10-9, October 9th. Good. Nothing after 11.59 on that day. Um, <clears throat> make sure you take a look at the sample final paper in step five. <clears throat> All right. Easter egg number two, academic rigor. Academic rigor. I want you to finish strong on this paper, okay? Make it really sing with academic scholarly work, right? Uh, because you'll use this paper for promotions, for jobs, for scholarships, for uh, entry into something, right? So, okay. So, um, that final paper, make sure you know what it looks like here. And I'll, and I'll, the, 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 the sample is great. Okay. Cover page, table of contents, on and on we go. One works cited list at the bottom. I can't emphasize it strongly enough that Follow the sample structure. Don't reinvent the wheel. No color, no high. Oh, yeah, color. I'm sorry. You can use that in your charts and graphs. Okay. I'm sure I'll talk more about this in the second video of, you know, the final video of the course. I'll do that probably around the fourth, I guess, uh, fourth or fifth. In the meantime, let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Take a good look at that sample so you know what you're getting into okay and um like i said remember you don't have a lot to turn in especially in this module you got to turn in the, the, the discussion board do your course evaluation and the fi final paper that's it between now and the ninth it's 11 days from now don't take that time and say well got it made 
excuse me, why do I always yawn to these things? I can't, if I'm an audience, I can't yawn. If I, I mean, if I'm in the audience, I yawn. If I'm doing it, I'm yawning. Boring. How are you doing? Wake up. <laughs> okay. Um, this, uh, uh, so look at the, the, the sample paper and I'll get a whole, get back to you. We're at 15, a little over 15 minutes here. So let's go with uh, Easter egg three, make it simple just because I want to hammer it. Um, it's not IDS equals integrative integration. It is course ends 10, nine course ends 10, nine kind of like sale ends 10, nine course ends 10, nine. All right. Forks up. Peace. Be safe out there.